What's up everybody, this is Yosarin from BoyMeetsPhone.com, and this here is the LG G3. After last year's G2 with its rear keys and excellent camera, the G3 has some pretty big shoes to fill, so let's see how it handles itself in this review. Taking a look at the design of the LG G3, you're going to notice that this is a decent sized device. So thanks to design choices, like the slight curved back, it does feel better in the hands than most. The curved back allows you to hold the device comfortably for a while, and also makes it feel deceptively smaller. The foam measures in at 146.3 by 74.6 millimeters, and it's 8.9 millimeters thick. That makes it larger than a phone like the Galaxy S5, but on par with the HTC One M8. As far as the overall build quality goes, I'd put this more on par with the M8. Despite the fact that, like the Galaxy S5, this is made mostly out of polycarbonate, it does feel a lot more solid in the hands. LG did a good job on the overall build quality of the device, and everything fits in perfectly. Taking a look at the back of the G3, much like the G2, you'll find rear volume and power buttons. Some users don't like this, some users do. This move was made, however, due to the fact that this is normally where your fingers would naturally rest. I found that in use, this didn't take long to get accustomed to and actually felt pretty comfortable. Change from last year, these buttons have been redesigned with a now concave shape decreasing the chance of accidentally pressing them while laying flat on the surface. Also, they are now textured, and gone is the LED notification found around back of the G2. Above the keys, you'll find a 13 megapixel autofocus camera with optical image stabilization. To the right of the camera, you'll find dual tone flashes. To the left of that, you'll find a laser. The laser is used for the camera's laser autofocus. Taking a look at the bottom of the phone, you'll find its rear-facing 1-watt speaker. Though the speaker is loud, it is rear-facing, which means it is not too difficult to cover up. In a nice change from last year, LG did make the back cover on the G3 removable. That means you have access to the 3000 milliamp hour battery, allowing you to swap it out. This also means you can change the back cover, adding wireless charging. And in another great change from last year, there's also expandable memory. There's a SD card slot here, which allows you to expand it up to an additional 128 gigs. Every flagship device has its hook, and by far LG's biggest hook on the G3 has to be its display. It measures in at 5.5 inches and sports incredibly thin, narrow bezels thanks to internal design choices by LG. These design choices allow each side to be as thin as possible, creating a display that pops out even more on this device. Add to that the fact that this is an IPS panel, so it does have really nice viewing angles, and it does produce very nice vibrant colors that are eye-catching. But by far the biggest thing on this display has to be its resolution. It measures in at 1440 by 2560 making this a quad-high-def display. Even looking at icons, you can see the amount of detail that this display is able to produce. The only downside is, at the moment, there is a lack of content to fully enjoy what this display is capable of. LG does throw a couple of sample videos on, and I'll show you one right now. Playing that so you can see. And as you can hear, also, the speaker on this is quite loud. There is a 1 watt speaker on it, so it's a very, very loud speaker but it looks very beautiful. You can see, hopefully the video is doing it justice. It's a very beautiful display, but there's not much content available to truly take advantage of this display. Taking a look at the user experience on the G3, the goal here was to create something that was simple yet smart, and in some ways LG has reached that goal, and in other ways it has fell short. The UI itself is really simple and clean with flat app icons and a nice color palette throughout which can be changed using its Steam engine. You still have the ability to customize it by changing the app icons and the ability to change the hotkeys on the bottom of the display. Fitting in with the theme, the notification pull down is really simple and clean with a very 
nice black and white theme going on. However, adding things like the Q-Slide apps and the remote control will show you that LG has not quite kept in line with its design aesthetics when it comes to everything on this device. These things end up looking like they are taped on top of instead of part of the notification pull-down. Knock-on gives you a simple way to wake up your device by double tapping on the display. If you're looking for something to secure your device, there's Knock Code, which allows you to set up a special pattern of taps to unlock your device. You can quick launch into the camera by pressing the volume down button, even when the phone screen is off. You can also use the volume up button to launch into LG's Memo app. However, these cannot be changed, which is a little bit sad. You can only turn them off. The G3 is no slouch in the performance department. It's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 SoC, which is, consists of a 2.5 GHz quad-core Crate 400 CPU and an Adreno 330 GPU. Paired with that is 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage with the ability to expand memory via a microSD card up to 128 gigs. Much like the G2 before it, I didn't find any hiccups or lag even while doing processor-intensive things like playing 3D video games. This thing simply ran as smooth as butter. The only word of warning I do have about the G3 is its screen sensitivity. I found that while having it in my pocket, it would either unlock or when I had the dock code on, lock itself because it kept trying to activate. As far as the battery life goes, this phone is powered by a 3000 milliamp hour battery. However, I did not get to test it over a cellular network. I will be revisiting that later once I get the chance to test out a carrier branded unit. This one was a Korean pre-production unit, so I had to use it on Wi-Fi. Over Wi-Fi, I had no issues getting through more than a day of moderate to heavy usage. Taking a look at the camera on the G3, the first thing that you'll notice is the revamped user interface. Whereas last year's G2 was more of a buffet style offering full of different settings and controls in shooting modes, the G3 is more like a prefix menu with only a select few options available. The interface itself is really clean and simple and straightforward with only a few visible controls which can be all hidden by tapping on the menu button. Tapping on the menu button will switch you to touch and shoot mode. In touch and shoot mode, you can simply tap on the display and will quickly focus in on your subject and snap a photo. Other cool interface tweaks include the ability to switch between cameras by making a one finger swipe across the display and the ability to take self portraits by closing your fists using the front facing camera. Doing so will start a countdown clock. As far as shooting modes go, LG has cut back a lot when compared to the G2, only offering four different shooting modes this go around. Those include auto, panoramic, dual, and magic focus. Magic focus is much like the modes found on the Galaxy S5, HTC One M8, and Xperia Z2, which allow you to refocus the shot. However, unlike any of those phones listed, the G3 doesn't have the ability to do so within the gallery. You have to change the focus immediately after taking the shot, or you will lose your chance. This is a little bit of a letdown in my opinion. Other options include the ability to change the photo size and change the video size. This does shoot 4K video and the ability to use HDR. Other than that, you have pretty much no other options. You don't have the ability to change the white balance. You don't have the ability to change the exposure. And that is, can be a let down to users who were hoping to have more control over their photos. When it comes to camera performance, I wasn't disappointed with the G3. It is a very quick camera. Not only was it quick to start, which is very useful, but it's really quick to focus thanks to that laser. This does use laser autofocus, so it, what it does is it shoots a laser at the subject and quickly bounces it back to the phone to read the depth information to adjust the focus accordingly. And I found that this worked really good. This is an incredibly quick camera to launch and take photos, so that's a plus in my book. The overall image quality 
it was really good. Uh, I did find that some of my photos came out a little bit softer than I would have liked. And also that with really bright colors, it tends to blow out a little bit um, over-exaggerating, being oversaturated. But overall, it does produce good images. When it comes to video, this does shoot up to 4K video. I also shoot 1080p high def. 720 high def and also um, slow motion 120 frames per second at 720p. I found that video recording, the video looked really nice, but more importantly, it sounded incredible. LG did a really good job with the mic setup on this device, so you're going to get really great audio with your video recordings. The G3 is a feature packed phone without a overabundance of features and that's a weird balance to try to strike though I feel like LG's done a decent job at it. It has a lot of awesome features on it but it doesn't have way too many that just clog up the device and make it slow down. This device runs really fast thanks to its Snapdragon 801 processor and it has a gorgeous display though at this moment there's not a lot of content to fully enjoy what the display is capable of until apps start getting updated to support the full resolution of the display, what you're going to be left with is a beautiful display that isn't being utilized to its full potential. Though at the end of the day, I have to say the G3 is a phone worth looking at and definitely worth picking up. For my latest tech reviews and help, make sure to check out the site boymeetsphone.com. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It would be greatly appreciated. And subscribe to the YouTube channel to keep up with my latest tech videos. If you're on social networks, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, pretty much all of them. I'll have the links below in the description. So this has been Yosarin from BoyMeetsPhone.com. Thanks for watching.